the final go round for Marcus and I, and we've got an incredible year in review for you. We also have not one, not two, but three heroes on the hill this week. And we have a whopping five jaw droppers on tap. All that and more coming up on the Extra Point. Welcome everyone for the final time this year to the Extra Point. I'm Marcus Browning. And I'm Will Puckett. Rolling in off a conference championship the year before in the second bowl win in school history, WKU football had some big shoes to fill. With the departure of Brandon Dowdy to the NFL, Mike White was tabbed to step in and take the reins. The Hilltoppers would kick off the year with a 46-14 win over the Rice Owls. Next up was the Alabama Crimson Tide and well, it went about as expected, a 38-10 loss. WKU would then drop only two more games on the season to La Tech and Vanderbilt. Brom and company would then would reel off eight wins in a row, including a second consecutive Conference USA Championship and another bowl win. So the Conference Championship part dose. After failing to complete a comeback in their earlier meeting, WKU would welcome in Louisiana Tech into LT Smith Stadium, putting their conference title on the line. Back and forth, the game would go all the way into the third quarter. The Tops, however, sealed the deal with a Brandon Leston interception, and the Tops secured their second straight conference title, becoming the first team in Conference USA history to host and win titles back to back. Uh, it's a huge, it's a huge accomplishment, obviously, uh, not just for us, but for the university. Um, and we're, pr we're real proud to be a part of that. Uh, you know, this program came a long way. Uh, Kyle, our SID, was telling me uh, back when I committed, we had won, just broke the 29. Uh, game losing streak, uh, had one seven win season. And uh, just for all the seniors to commit to something like that is, you know, unbelievable. Now that bowl game I talked about. For the second year in a row, WKU would saddle up and head to the Sunshine State for a bowl game. This year in Boca Raton, the Hilltoppers would take on another American Athletic Conference opponent in Memphis. The Tigers boasted a deadly offense. However, WKU was deadlier. The key weapon to that deadly WKU offense was Ace Wales, who amassed a whopping 329 yards from scrimmage paving the way for WKU and interim head coach Nick Holt. Tops, Boca Bowl champs, 51-31. All the veterans on the offense kind of from an offensive standpoint came together and, and decided it's not going down, it's, it's going up. They, they've been here for a while, they experienced a lot of success and we wanted to continue it. And that just, uh, it's a real testament to the veteran guys we have around. Just one day after meeting with the media to discuss accepting the invite to the game Will just talked about, WKU Athletic Director Todd Stewart hosted an availability to discuss head coach Jeff Brom leaving WKU for the Purdue football head coaching vacancy. Brom compiled a 30-10 and 10 record while at WKU, including two conference championships and two bowl wins. With Jeff Brom gone, Todd Stewart didn't waste any time finding his replacement. Just under a week prior to the Hilltoppers playing in that Boca Raton Bowl, WKU announced the hiring of Mike Sanford, Jr. Sanford became the 20th head coach for the Hilltopper football program, and with experience coaching and playing in Power 5 conferences, and also spending some time here on the Hill back in 2010, Mike Sanford was ready for his first head coaching position and the challenges it would bring. Make sure that everybody understands that I have a passion for this place, I have a passion for this job, and most importantly, I can't wait to attack this job with an enthusiasm that, that is really un unknown. Father-son duos are a common thing in the world of sports, and WKU football now has one of its own. Extra Point reporter Miles Schroeder has more. College football has had a long-standing tradition of a father hiring on a son as an assistant coach. But here at WKU, things have been done a little differently in that the father has been hired on by the son. Upon taking WKU's head coaching position in December, Mike Sanford Jr. wasted no time in hiring on his father, Mike Sanford Sr., just one day after being hired. Although the dynamic of a father working under his son may seem odd to some, Sanford Jr. sees it as a positive thing. You know, there's, there's times where, you know, we have, we have really good conversations, uh, you know, where I'm, you know, a head coach and he's, he's an assistant coach. And then there's other times where, you know, I have a conversation where I might reach out to him and, and uh, ask him for some advice in a particular area because I know he's been through it. Even though Sanford Jr. has now taken the reins as head coach, he credits much of the team's early progression to his father. A lot of the, uh, the most energetic periods that we have in practice are our special teams competitive periods. Uh, we, you know, Coach Sanford Sr. divided the, you know, the, the special teams into four teams, allowed them to, uh, 
to, to name their own teams. And so that's why you see a lot of, a lot of ruckus uh, when the special teams comp competition period is going on. And, uh, you know, I've, I just enjoyed watching uh, the way that the players have responded to his, his experience, all he's been exposed to. And, uh, you know, it's been really fun. As Sanford Jr. developed into the coach he is today, he spent much of his time early on learning the game from his dad. You know, I always included him. You know, he hung around me. He went to training camp with me. Uh, when I was at USC, he came to, you know, football camps with me, uh, training camp. I took him recruiting with me a couple times in spring recruiting. You know, then I, I think his whole experience, uh, he was a graduate assistant uh, for our staff when I was the head coach at UNLV. Despite the role reversal, Sanford Sr. is far from bitter about working under his son. It's been an awesome experience to, to be a part of this and, and see him in that role and uh, see him develop over the years and it's been it's it's been a great great it's a great experience for me now and uh, I'm enjoying each each day. Even though the Sanford duo is breaking tradition the dynamic has yet to cause anything but positivity between the two. Reporting for the Extra Point I'm Lyle Schroeder. The Sanford duo will coach their first regular season game together at WKU when the Hilltoppers host EKU in September. And now Will before we move on from football the NFL draft starts tonight, and one Hilltopper hopes to hear his name tonight. Yeah, definitely. Forrest Lamp, again, looks to light up that scoreboard. Um, I really like what Forrest Lamp has to offer. He is 6'4 and is trying to play that tackle position, so he's been told a lot of the time he's going to have to be brought in, play interior offensive line. And Marcus, Marcus, if there's one thing that we know from the NFL draft, interior linemen don't go early. So that might be one thing. But I'm thinking 18 to 25, Forrest might be in there. Well, another person that I'm looking forward to seeing, and that's going to be Taewon Taylor, wide receiver. He's projected to go anywhere from the third or fourth round. So I definitely think it's going to be interesting to see where he goes. So uh, it's going to be really fun. For sure. We'll just have to wait and see. Moving on to another highly successful squad on the hill, Travis Hudson and his Lady Toppers volleyball squad had themselves another victorious campaign. The ladies blazed their way through the regular season, amassing a record of 30-3. In, in conference, they didn't drop a single game. In conference, they didn't drop more than six sets all season, two of those six coming in conference championship game against the Rice Owls. Again, the ladies dropped only six sets in conference play all season year. So the ladies would go on to three Peters conference champions. In the tournament, Hudson and company would face three of the four conference USA teams. First up, UTEP. Rachel Anderson would lead the way for the Lady Tops as they swept the minors 3-0. Next up, UTSA. WKU would steamroll the Roadrunners 3-1, placing them in a showdown against Rice. A 20-game win streak on the line, the Lady Tops would yet again be led by tournament MVP Rachel Anderson, and the Tops would claw their way to a 3-2 victory in their third straight title. Almost done with volleyball, but hey, they had to take their shot in an NCAA title as well. The Ladies would boast a 21-game win streak as they headed out to Palo Alto, California, with Boise State waiting in the wings. The Lady Tops would be outmatched as they stood in blow for blow with the Broncos. Even with Jessica Lucas recording her 4,000th career assist at WKU, the Tops would be swept out of the tournament 3-0. WKU soccer had quite the successful regular season campaign for 2016. The ladies went 12-6 overall and dominated over the Conference USA competition, compiling a 7-3 conference record good enough to place them at number 3 in CUSA. WKU rolled into the conference tournament with momentum, winning four of their last six regular season outings. But unfortunately, Charlotte would hand the Lady Tops an early exit in round number one after falling 4-1 on penalty kicks. And normally we have just one hero on the hill, but for today's show, we've got a hero on the hill for each sporting season. For the fall, his name lit up the stat sheet week after week. And he is another man who hopes to hear his name called at some point this weekend in the NFL draft. That man is none other than Taewon Taylor. Taylor accumulated over 4,000 yards on 253 receptions during his career here on the Hill, also adding 41 touchdowns to that total. So congrats, Taewon. You're the extra points fall hero on the Hill. Now, Marcus, one team claimed not only the regular season Conference USA title, but another one as well. And we'll be able to tell you who the winner here on the Hill. That's coming up next. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help 
I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. It's fine that other people like you. It's more important that you like yourself. And I'm comfortable with every part of me. Meals on wheel coming to my door as someone who's housebound assures me that I'm not forgotten. They care that I'm okay. My name is Asha Ida Bell. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. WKU basketball head coach Rick Stansbury said all season long he just wanted his team to have a chance to win ball games. And while the team struggled this year overall, going below 500 on the season, the Hilltoppers did protect their home court, totaling an 11 and 3 record in Diddle Arena. However, the road was where the boys in red had a tough time capturing wins. WKU suffered a 4-12 road record, even dropping a neutral site game to Washington in November out in Sin City. Their final regu regular season record tallied 15 wins with 16 losses. Following the senior night victory in the Hilltoppers' final game of the regular season, Coach Sansbury said now it's just a one-game season, win one game at a time. WKU faced UTSA in round number one of the Conference USA Tournament down in Birmingham with an 8-9 seed matchup. To put it simply, the game was ugly. Both teams shot below 37% from the floor, with the tops going just over 30% for the game. And of course, that wouldn't be enough to secure the win, and the tops left Birmingham early with the 56-52 first round loss. To give us an opportunity just to compete, or it could have been bad. It could have been a really tough challenge where we're at. So I'm not happy where we're at, but I'm proud of those guys and what they were able to do this year by giving us a chance, by just giving us a chance and an opportunity to fight. And we did that. After having to assemble that team rather quickly last year, Rick Stansberry has compiled quite the list of players for this upcoming season campaign. Spearheading the list is none other than five-star center Mitchell Robinson, listed in the top ten by most recruiting websites. Followed by him is four-star small forward Josh Anderson, Juco transfer Jordan Brangers with in-state signings Tavion Hongsworth and Jake Comer rounding out the class. Currently that class sits at number 12 from ESPN's class rankings just behind Missouri and Xavier. Well, anything men can do, women can certainly do better. MCH and company rolled into this season boasting a Final Four WNIT appearance and looking to return to the NCAA tournament. Led by fifth-year seniors Kendall Noble and Micah Jones, WKU kicked off the season with back-to-back 90-plus -back point performances. WKU then would streak through conference play, losing only two games all season and boasting an impressive sweep of rival MTSU. With their regular season performance in that sweeping of middle, WKU would earn the top spot in the conference tournament. The Lady Tops would be the first team in conference history winning three tournament games by double-digit margins. The Lady Tops would beat Southern Miss in the title game, giving MCH and company a cherry on top to their wonderful season. I really, really believe we grew so much in the past month and a half, and it has a lot to do with Kendall Noble and Micah Jones, uh, and they just did whatever we asked them. And uh, I remember winning the regular season championship and Kendall Noble telling me, we got three more, Coach. We got three more. And uh, this team showed up, and I'm proud of them. After those three more games, it was NCAA tournament time. 
And after two previous trips over a thousand miles from home, the Lady Tops would travel some 200 miles to Lexington to take on Ohio State in NCAA tournament play. The ladies would put up a fight, but they struggled to get shots to fall, something unseen on this team all season. MCH and company's title pursuit would end short with a 70-63 loss to the Ohio State Buckeyes. You wish your uh, career you could have a player that believed in you so much and just did whatever you asked her. And for a player that's as special as Kendall Noble, who every day comes to work and does everything you asked her. I wouldn't trade it for the world, you know. I wasn't highly recruited when I came out of high school, but, you know, WKU was the perfect fit for me, and it all worked out. And, you know, I thank God that he brought me into Coach Hutch's life. And, you know, she just pushed me and made me into the player room today. Hey, Marcus, what do you get when you mix a first-year head coach and a not-so-highly-recruited talent? Would three conference championships as well as three NCAA tournament appearances be a good answer? I mean, how about the first lady in Conference USA history to record two triple doubles in a or, season? Or how about a lady heel topper that will go down in the record books? Uh, Marcus, are you talking about Kendall Noble? Well, I'm, I'm talking about Kendall Noble, and she is our second hero, hero on, on the, the hill. hill. It's our last time here on the extra point, and we aren't kicking the extra point. We're going to go up for two coming up. Marcus, and we'll also tell you how the women's golf season was anything but subpar. You've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. We cannot be bystanders. We can stop to make sure someone is OK. We can warn someone when their drink isn't safe. And disrupt the situation. We can get someone the cab or walk them home safely. We can make campuses safer for our friends, our roommates, our, our classmates, classmates, our, our fellow, fellow human, human beings. beings. We cannot be bystanders. We, we can intervene. It's on us, all of us. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. We've talked fall, we've talked winter, now let's start off the spring. WKU softball has seen better seasons, but they've also seen worse. Letty Tops have kept things close to 500 for most of the season, but have captured some notable wins, including dubs against Mississippi State, Northwestern, and even shutting out Louisville last week. Amy Tudor and company currently sit with a 26 win, 23 loss record with an even 10 and 10 conference resume. Good enough to put them at fourth place in the CUSA East Division. Now, as for what remains for the Lady Tops, they're slated for a weekend stint against Miami or against Florida International down in Miami. Then they have a doubleheader against in-state foe Eastern Kentucky to cap off the regular season next Wednesday. As for the Conference USA Tournament, Southern Miss is playing host for that, and that begins on Wednesday, May 10th. Well, men's sports on the hill seem to be a struggle as of late, and you can add Tops baseball to the list. In the second season under John Pulaski, the Tops are struggling to find their way. 
The Tops currently sit at 13 and 29 overall and 4 and 14 in conference play. The Tops started off the year in thrilling fashion as Caleb Duckworth hit a walk-off home run to pro propel the Tops to a 6-5 victory. However, you can say it's been downhill from there as the Tops have picked up only a single series since. They may not be winning in it, but the Nick is looking quite nice. Over this past offseason, WKU Athletics renovated Nick Dennis Field, which included the addition of a turf playing surface. Outside of upkeep, the update was made so the Tops could host more meaningful home games early in the season. While our time with you all here at the Extra Point is coming to an end, WKU baseball season is right in the thick of it. WKU has 13 games remaining on the season, including a series with rival Marshall in Charleston, West Virginia on the 4th, 5th, and 6th of May. WKU track and field teams maintain their status of a premier program in Conference USA this season. The men's team even picked up a top 25 ranking earlier this month. Recently, as a whole, both teams combined 12 top five finishes last weekend at the Georgia Tech invite, as well as two individual titles. The teams have two more events on schedule leading up to the Conference USA Championships held in El Paso starting May 11th. And moving from the track to the tennis courts, WKU Tennis had quite the season to say the least. The Lady Tops boasted their first win against rival MTSU since 1989. Yeah, that was before I was born as well as securing over a 70% regular season winning percentage, which just so happens to be the best since they've done since 2001. Ladies also made their way to their first ever conference tournament semifinals where they would eventually fall to FIU 4-0, ending their season with a 13-6 final record. Four, just kidding. The WKU men's golf team has been cruising their way through the 2017 campaign. The tops were led by Billy Tom Sargent as WKU finished with nine top 10 finishes on the year. The tops just concluded the Conference USA Championship where the scores are still coming in. The women's golf team has seen much of the same success on the links thanks to the help of one lady. As Hannah Sells brought to you last week on the Extra Point, Georgina Blackman is tearing it up. She has led the, top, the lady tops to nine top 10 finishes in the 2016 and 2017 campaign. WKU wrapped up their season with one first place finish at the Great Cre Drake Creek Invitational at Murray State and finished in sixth place at the Conference USA Championship last week. We have a packed hero on the Hill schedule. As Marcus and I have brought to you Taewon Taylor and Kendall Noble, however, there's one lady that stands tall in the circle. This lady has a 2.7 ERA on the year. She has pitched 152 innings, leading the Lady Tops to 14 wins on the season. Outside of that, she's also the granddaughter of former WKU president Dero Downing. Our third and final hero on the hill is none other than Katherine Downing. We've got not one, not two, not three, not four, but five jaw droppers for you. We'll be bringing them to you. Oh, man. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. your emergency plan today. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. 
Normally we give you just one jaw dropper, but as Will said, today we are going to give you five. So let's go ahead and take the first one. First up, Conference USA Tournament first round, WKU playing against Charlotte. The ladies down 1-0. Sarah Gorham taking it up the field from the half. She gets it to a couple of her different teammates, but now she's able to get into the box. She's able to get her shot, and she scores, tying up the game. It would go to overtime, but unfortunately, WKU would go on to lose the outing. All right, heading down to the Sunshine State. Mike White under center in the Boca Bowl. Fakes the handoff, rolls to his left, throws it back to his right. Oh, that's Forrest Lamp. Lighten up the scoreboard. Forrest Lamp, touchdown, Hilltoppers, Boca Bowl champs, 51-31 third full game in a row. Now number three, Tops taking on CUSA opponent Rice at the Houch. Nine minutes remain in the second quarter. Rice quarterback Tyler Stelling fires a pass to his receiver across the middle of the field. The pass bounces off the receiver's hands and as WKU DB DeAndre Simmons makes an incredible interception to give WKU the ball. From Smith Stadium to the Nick, beautiful new turf. WKU Belmont tied 2-2. Bottom of the ninth, Grayson Ivy with a rope to center field. Marshall, oh, here we go. Marcus, Hilltoppers, walk off, double, win the game. Now, Team Storms. Last but not least, WKU versus UAB. Tops with the ball, Justin Johnson takes a three from the corner. Pancake Thomas comes flying through the paint and throws down a big put back dunk. WKU would eventually go on to take that win 76 to 64. We're closing things down here on the extra point and just a few final remarks that I have. It's been an experience. Covering WKU Sports has been a great time and it's it's honestly sad that it, it's it's coming to an end. Yeah, definitely. It's two years ago you and I stood here taking over this show for Josh and Fletcher and here we stand saying goodbye. We've experienced a lot. Three bowl wins, three or two conference championships, the women's basketball team soaring. Thank you all so much for always joining the extra point. We got a little something for y'all. Admission will be free to see the three-time Conference USA champs back in action this Saturday starting at noon. The even bigger story of the night was watching redshirt senior Micah Jones join two of her teammates in the 1,000-point club. However, taking all those shots, still leave a mark. Whether Justin Johnson decides to play basketball, football, or both is still to be determined. Either way, he'll still be a fan favorite here on the Hill. Welcome back to the Extra Point. WKU Baseball had a better start to their season than expected. Reporter Madison Bonzo has more from opening weekend at Nick Dennis Field. Keep things going. I've got this tractor right here behind me. And right now we're going to head back to the Scott Cam to show you guys what's all going on up there. This is the extra point. Let's, Let's go. go. We did it. Hilltoppers, baby. Let's go. WKU won. Thank you so much for tuning into the extra point. As always, it's up. It's always up. It's up. The extra point is up. And it's good. Wow, and now will all the seniors here join us <laughs> and you know for the final time as the cake says it's up and it's, and good. it's good thanks y'all <laughs> 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 wow <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>